Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA video. In this fairly short session, we're going to quickly explain how you can save a workbook as a PDF document. And just to quickly cover what we're going to mention in the video, we'll explain first of all why the Save As method doesn't work for saving as PDFs, and then introduce you to the Export As Fix Format method, which of course does work. And we'll show you how you can save either a complete workbook or even individual parts of a workbook, such as a single worksheet or a single chart or a single range of cells as a PDF. And then finally, we'll write a routine that loops through all of the chart objects in the charts collection of a workbook and creates a separate PDF for each one. So it's not a very long video, but let's get started. The technique for saving a workbook as a PDF is actually pretty straightforward to use, but there is one potential source of confusion with the way this works. And it kind of stems from the fact that when you save a workbook normally in Excel, so if I press the F12 key on the keyboard to display the Save As dialog box, if I wanted to save this file as a PDF, I can simply choose the PDF file type from the Save As type list. So that makes it easy to assume that when you save a workbook in VBA, as a PDF, use the Save As method to do so, just like any of the other file types. But sadly, that's not true. If I want to demonstrate that, I'm going to head to the, uh, the VB editor by either heading to the Developer tab and choosing Visual Basic, or of course pressing the Alt F11 keyboard shortcut. And then I've already inserted a module into this project, which you can do by right clicking somewhere in the Project Explorer and choosing Insert Module. And then in there, I'm going to create a quick subroutine called Save Workbook as PDF. I can then attempt to apply the Save As method to the workbook to save it as a PDF. And to do that, I'll need to reference the workbook first. A variety of techniques I can use to do that. I'm going to choose to use the This Workbook keyword. So the quickest way to achieve that is to press Control and Space on the keyboard, then look for This Workbook in the list, followed by a full stop, and then the Save As method. If I then type in a space, it will display a tooltip showing me the list of parameters for the method. And the second parameter there says file format, which I, I think naturally assumed when I first attempted to do this, one of the valid choices of file format would be PDF. But sadly, that's not the case. And just to quickly prove that, I'm going to get some help on the Save As method. The quickest way to achieve that is to click somewhere on the word Save As, and then press the F1 key on the keyboard. Now, in this version of Excel, Excel 2013, this will take you to a web browser and load the page on the MSDN site. So I've actually already loaded that, just to avoid you having to watch me load a page in my browser. So here we are, the workbook save as method. And then if I scroll through the page a little bit, I'll find the file format parameter described, and a quick little link here to the file format enumeration, which will show me all the valid file formats. Again, I've loaded that page already to avoid you having to watch it. Um, so here's the Excel file format enumeration. And if you scroll through this list, you'll find, well, rather, sorry, rather you won't find the PDF file format in that list at all, because that's not how you save a workbook as a PDF. There's in fact a completely separate method for saving a workbook, or indeed any part of a workbook, as a PDF. And the method name is called export as fixed format. So to apply the export as fixed format method to the workbook, let's start by removing the reference of the save as method, and then we can press control and space again to display the IntelliSense list. You need to start with a reference to the workbook, of course, again, and then look for the export as fixed format method in the list. If I type in a space to display the tooltip, which shows me the parameters, we'll see there's one compulsory parameter, there's one, one parameter listed not in a set of square brackets, so that's called type. So the only thing you must do is choose exactly which format type you want to use. Now, there are two fixed format types provided in, uh, in this method. There's the traditional PDF, which I suppose is going to be the most common one you're likely to choose, but there's also XPS, which is sort of Microsoft's alternative to PDFs. The point of this video is to show how to use PDFs, so that's what I'm going to go for. And after that, all the other parameters are completely optional. So I'm going to leave those all as they are currently, and then simply execute this subroutine to see what happens. If I run the routine, it's shown me just a very brief flash of the screen that it's published a PDF document. Now, if you don't specify otherwise by using one of the optional parameters of export as fixed format, the PDF document gets saved in whichever Excel thinks is the current folder. And for me, that's the same folder in which I've just saved this Excel workbook. So if I quickly navigate to that using, uh, using Windows Explorer, you'll see that as, lo as well as the Excel workbook itself, I've got a PDF document with exactly the same name, except it's got the PDF extension, of course. So just to double click to show you what's, uh, what's in that file, if I double click to open it up, and we'll see a list of several pages. So one page for each sheet, effectively, in the Excel workbook. So I've got a worksheet and then a bunch of fairly basic looking charts. Um, so not particularly sophisticated, just enough to demonstrate that you get a separate page for each object in your Excel workbook. If I just close down the PDF reader and then switch back to Excel, one thing to quickly note, 
if, if you have blank worksheets, then they, of course, won't create a page in the PDF document. So it's only populated worksheets that, for which you get a page. Now, if you did want to choose the location that the PDF gets saved to, you can use one of the optional parameters of the exporters fixed format method. So if I switch back into the Visual Basic Editor and just type in a comma after the first parameter that I provided, you'll see that I get to the file name parameter. And this can be just as something as simple as a, a, a string that represents the exact location. So I've got to give a full file name. Let's just put it somewhere quick and simple, like C colon backslash um, uh, egpdf.pdf. Just something very, very quick and simple. Now, if I've done that and I run the code again, I'll get a new document exported. But this time, it won't be in my um, my same current folder. It will be in the root of my C drive. And there it is, e.g. PDF. You can make this technique even more relevant by maybe providing a folder path that's relative to the user who's running the code in the first place. So rather than saving it in a fixed folder path, like we saved it in the root of our C drive, we could refer to the user's desktop or perhaps the user's documents folder instead. So if we wanted to make that one work, we need to make sure that the code works for whomever is running the code. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, the simplest way to achieve this is to use a function in VBA called environ. What this will do is return uh, a value from one of the Windows environment variables. Uh, so sorry if you're using a Mac at this point, um, but there, there's no uh, Windows environment variables in, in Mac OS for obvious reasons. So if we, just to show you how the environment function works, if we head to the View menu and choose immediate window, just a little simple diagnostic tool. You've probably seen me use this tool in, in other videos if you've watched them, of course. So if I question mark environ, then open some parentheses, I can then pass in the name of any Windows environment variable. And the one that I'm interested in in this case is called user profile. So if I hit enter at the end of that instruction, it will show me what the uh, the function returns. So for me, it returns the path to my user profile, andrew.gould, that's me, hi. Um, so all I would need to do then to generate a complete folder path is to concatenate to the end of that a valid folder. So I could go for desktop, I suppose, um, or in this case, let's go for documents instead. So if I say documents and then a backslash and then the name of the file itself. So I'll go for egpdf again, dot pdf, then hit enter at the end of that line and it will generate the correct folder path for saving that file. But of course, this bit will be variable. The, uh, the username itself will be variable based on whomever is running the code. So all I would need to do at this point is for the file name parameter, remove that section where I've hard coded it and replace it with the expression I've just written in here. So if I've done that and then I execute the subroutine again and then switch back again to, uh, to a Windows Explorer window and in the, the user's documents folder I should now find yet again another copy of my PDF file. So we've seen how to save an entire workbook as a PDF. What if you wanted to save just a small element of a workbook as a PDF? So for instance, what if you wanted to save a single worksheet or a single chart, or even just a range of cells on a sheet? Well, we can do that too because you can apply the same export as fixed format method to a variety of object types. So let's create another quick subroutine here that says uh, save other items as PDFs. And then in here, we're going to apply the, the, the export as fixed format method to a variety of other objects. So let's apply it first to a worksheet. So I've got a worksheet here called Sheet 1. And again, I've got a variety of ways that I can reference that. Quickest and simplest is to use the code name of the sheet. So press Control space, look for the code name, which in this case is Sheet 1, and then a full stop and export as fixed format. So there you go, it's exactly the same method. So in this case, I'm going to go for a, another PDF and then a comma and the file name. I want to stick it in the user's desktop, sorry, the user's documents folder again. So I'm going to copy and paste the code that I wrote in the previous example just up here and then just tweak it ever so slightly. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it in and then rather than call it eg PDF, I'm going to call this one sheet one. Okay, so there we go. And then I can do exactly the same thing for any of my charts. So again, if I use one of my chart code names, I could say, let's say chart one dot export as fixed format. There it is again. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste the code I've just written here. So I'm going to choose a PDF again, and then I'm going to use the uh, a slightly different name, of course. I don't want the same file name. It's going to be called chart one. And then finally, just to show you that you can apply it to a range of cells as well. So what I'm going to do here is say sheet one dot range. And then the range of cells that I want to reference, just to switch back to Excel just very briefly, is range A1 to C19. So just that single block of cells there. So range A1 to C19. 
Uh, of course, you can use any of the other techniques you know for referencing a range of cells. If you have relative selection tricks to use, like current region or entire row, entire column, that sort of thing, feel free to use those. The important thing is that once you've referenced a range, once again, you've got access to the export as fixed format method. It's all relatively uh, consistent, isn't it? So if I just copy and paste once again this set of code here, and maybe just change the name again, so I'm just going to call this um, uh, range range will do, range.pdf, perfect. Good, so having rolled that now, we can simply execute this subroutine. Uh, if I, sorry, I can't resist changing my capitalization there, that should have been a capital S. And then run that one again, and we will see, hopefully at this point, if I switch back to my documents folder, three new PDF files, and indeed there they all are. So sheet one contains just one single page, which is, unsurprisingly, sheet one. Chart one contains a single page, unsurprisingly again, chart one. And then the arrange version will contain just a single page again, and it's kind of indistinguishable from the, uh, the 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 first worksheet example, isn't it? Because there was only one range of data essentially in there. But if we had multiple ranges of data for the worksheet, you'd see all of those in the in the sheet example. This one here, the range would only include range A1 to C19. And feel free to test these things out yourself. It is relatively easy to to quickly create lots of PDFs and test that you're getting exactly what it is you want. So there we go. That's how to apply this. Same uh, sorry, the exporters fixed format method to a variety of other object types, sheets, charts, and ranges. As a final flourish for this video, we've seen how we can save a single specific object as a PDF. What if we wanted to save, for example, each individual chart as a separate PDF, regardless of how many charts there were in the workbook. So even if you only have four in this example, you might have 40 different charts, and you want a separate PDF for each one. It'd be fairly tedious to write out a separate line of code for each individual chart. So what we can do instead is use a for each loop to loop over the charts collection, and for each one of those charts, export it as a PDF file. So to start with, we'll need a new subroutine. Um, we'll call this something like export each chart as PDF. And then we'll need a standard for each loop. So to make that work, we'll need a variable that can hold a reference to a single object of the type we're looping over. So I'm going to call mine dim ch as chart. And then for each ch in charts. So the charts collection belonging to the workbook. I always close my loop by writing the next statement, so next ch, and then I can head back up and fill in the detail. I do that because I'm prone to forgetting to do it later on, should I not do it at this point. So, for each one of these charts, I want to apply the export as fixed format method. So I'm going to say ch dot export as fixed format. Then I'll choose the PDF type again. And then I simply need to construct a file name for each chart. So again, I'm going to stick this into the user's documents folder. So I'm going to copy and paste something that I've done previously just this part from the previous routine, environment user profile, ampersand, documents, and a backslash. So if I copy that part there and then paste it in, close a set of double quotes there. Then all I'd like to do is use the name of the chart that I'm currently looking at in this iteration of the loop. So I'm going to concatenate ch.name, and then finally concatenate another string literal at the end, which will be .pdf to make sure it has the correct extension. Okay, so that's a nice, simple, straightforward loop that will work for however many charts are in the collection of charts in the workbook and export a separate PDF for each one of them. So having written that code, I'm going to execute it. And having done so, head back to my documents folder and I should find now that I've got a separate PDF for each chart. Um, you may notice I should have demonstrated this more clearly, I suppose, but chart 1 has been overwritten, so the original version of chart 1 has been overwritten with the new version, so that's one, one thing to watch out for when you export as PDFs, they will overwrite automatically any pre-existing version. But there you go, you can see each chart has its own separate PDF file. So a relatively simple bit of code that can do an awful lot of work for you. Um, hopefully you're going to find that sort of stuff useful in the real world. Um, thanks for watching, see you next time. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.